Studio. Check. Frequencies check. We are live on air. You are listening to the impact blessing the airway. Come on. Take the journey into the world of sports, news, entertainment, while embracing the hottest beats on the planet. Come on, Rocking the mind, body, and soul. Energy, electricity, and a splash of controversy. Okay, okay. Now, without further ado, it's our pleasure to bring to you the biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The biggest show in the world. The SBTV Nation. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Happy Friday Eve. This is Rob the Mad Hatter from the SPTV Nation, and I'm having a conversation with my man, the Dream. Happy Kid, what's up? Happy Eve. Happy what? Friday Eve, Dream. I like that term. <laughs> my boy running around this morning, 100 miles an hour, got in a little bit tardy, so to say. Yeah, a little bit, just a touch. I, I know you're running, doing your thing out there. Um, I used to deal with it when I used to have to drop my son off at daycare. It used to be crazy because I don't live that far from where we got to do the show from. So as I drop him off, you try to get over it, and all of a sudden you get behind the school bus. That oh, no doubt. A hundred times. And people going slow, and it's just absolutely crazy. But SPTV Nation... The dream and the hat are in the house. What's going on, y'all? Dream, I'm just you, you. You sound a little happy today, and I'm happy to hear that because I didn't know if you were going to be like very distraught, like most of the people in the country, most of the students out there who actually need therapeutic dogs to cope with the travesty of the election that Donald Trump got elected president. Dude, this is the most ridiculous stuff I've ever heard. Well, are, you, are you serious? You really need to cope. You need to cancel exams. You need to do all this stuff. Get your ass out of bed. Get your business done. Enough is enough, man. You, you know what? If you're a Clinton supporter, whatever. You lost four years. Vote vote for somebody else. It, you don't. Life doesn't stop because you got a, a different president. Come on. Well, first of all, I'm glad you brought that up because I was on Twitter the last couple of days and we were having a little bit of conversation with a couple of individuals who didn't really particularly care, I guess, for my stance. And I'm not totally against Trump. I've talked about it on this program before. Some of his ideas I happen to agree with. I don't like his presentation, and I don't think that his personality is that of such that is of presidential quality, okay? But I'm able to deal with that. The things that I was discussing, though, that I was talking about was in which was my point was the one thing I do want is I want the same intent and the same uh, living under a microscope and what and questioning every move that was made by Mr. Obama yeah, right. as president. I want that same intensity on Mr. Trump. That's all I'm asking for, because Every time Obama sneezed, somebody was there to say he didn't have a handkerchief. Uh, he shouldn't have sneezed. Uh, the air was bad. Obama got blamed for everything under the sun. And say what you want about Obama. Say what you want about Obama and everybody's told their own opinion. But one thing Obama never did as far as I'm concerned, and I think it's been even cognizant right now that you're talk- passing the torch. Obama never embarrassed himself or embarrassed this country. Right. All right. I agree with that. Always was the consummate professional. If you don't agree with some of the stuff he said, or you don't agree with some of the things he did that, whatever, that's you not agreement. But as far as him not being professional and not being classy, that's one thing you can't say about him because even now with pass the torch over to the Donald and even with the comments that he's made since Donald Trump won the election, Dude's been nothing but a class act. I agree. Totally. And you know what? It had to take a real... I mean, for him to actually have to go and shake the man's hand, I give them both a lot of credit for that because they both were at each other's throats, obviously. But, you know, it's all about unity now, guys. Come on. You got to wake up, man. You don't get to work. Do your thing. You know, you're not going to get anywhere by swarming the streets, stopping traffic. Stop. Enough. 
but a lot of people forget Obama took over. I agree. I, I love the people who talk about how bad Obama is. And it's like, dude, George W. Bush, honestly, probably the worst president to date. W murdered it. <laughs> w. <laughs> and it's like, we all forgot. Like, like nobody even remembers that he was the president. All right. As soon as Obama, it was like, Obama was like the best thing for, for, for George W. Obama was the best thing. So, Nobody will ever remember all the the nonsense that he did. All uh, right, I, I, I I'm telling you, man. If my son was in college and couldn't take an exam because he was so distraught over the election, I would drive to whatever college he's at and just Adrian <laughs> Peterson him. I really would dream. Seriously, <laughs> listen, dude. Relax. College kids always gonna come up with something. They got, come on, player. Yeah. Next <laughs> the game is party. Girls are getting drunk and probably smoking weed. All right. I got it. I understand. I understand. Uh, any, any excuse to continue that activity, you got to bank on it right I now. Know, hey, I, I can't know. handle it. The I Trump know. got elected, so I need to get back to the party. <laughs> I can't do the show because Trump got elected. I'm, I'm distraught. I'm upset. Someone, I'm upset. Someone, one more comment I want to make about the election, and I want to make about a few of my comments on Twitter. I agree with Hat that we all need to come together, and I'm the biggest proponent of that. There's one more little comment I want to make in regards to um to the racial fabric of the country, and I just want to say that, you know, I came from a household that was very tough on... My, my mom and dad were a lot tougher on me during that particular era as far as my raising was concerned. Um... To kind of not be, not be a knucklehead and to learn how to deal with society, blend in society and not necessarily use my race as a, as a get out of, I don't know, we say get out of jail free card as a pass. I wasn't able to do that. In fact, it was considered like, don't pay that any attention. You need to rise above and you need to, to, to try to do better. I'm a very much of a big proponent of that. And uh, Chris Rock has commented a lot of times on his comedy about there's also a civil war within the black um, community, which is some black people versus some other type of folks. And I think you know what I'm trying to say without using that word. And that very much still reigns true today in far, as far as America is concerned in our own society and the African-American culture. Somebody that I went back and forth with on Twitter, and I'm sure those of you who watched on Twitter know what I'm talking about, seem to use that flat, flat platform to get in a little bit about black on black crime. And trust me, Nobody is more against black on black crime than myself. And I just want to let's put that out there. Don't think that by me trying to uplift Obama and complain about some of the racial atrocities in this country that I'm giving my own race a pass. No one's more harder on my own particular race than myself. So that would not be the case. I don't like anything that the black leadership is doing out there for the most part. I think a lot of guys come around, they're rah-rah, they're looking out more for themselves than opposed to getting everybody together. And I'm for protesting, but I'm for peaceful protesting. I'm not for people, you know, bombing and burning up and breaking stuff and all that. I'm I'm not, I don't stand for that at all. The only way this country will ever get right is for everybody to get on the same page all together. Black, white, Hispanic, you know, Asian, whatever it is, we're all human beings. And that's what I stand for. And that's what my message is about. And it's not about any type of separatist or unequality. And that's the end of my political tirade for this morning. (laughs) Well, you know what? Just in case you're new to the show and you don't know our faces, uh, the dream is black and I am a white boy. So he could talk about that all day long if he wants. But anyway, let's move on here. And Dream, you know, speaking of uh, uh, speaking of black, you know, it's it's National Black Cat Day. Oh, shoot. So that means you can't bet any of my plays because you are the black cat. Anytime you get on my teams, I tend to lose. So anyway, guys, just so you know, we are the SBTV Nation. We are a sports show, but every once in a blue moon, we got to kind of get some stuff off our chest. Well, no doubt we do real life yeah, here. No, it's real, real, life. real, man. It's real. So in bowls, lollipops, and sunshine. Over there. <laughs> right on. But I think it's a pretty cool uh, little little segue into that dream. And you know what? This is just real talk. That's no what doubt. It is. No doubt. All Definitely. right. So move, moving on here, dream. I see you got a lot of notes. Um, I've been a little. I, I've been working like literally 
75 hours a week since my father passed away. So I'd like to see what you got. Get me up to speed a little bit on what's going on here. First of all, let's go around the blotter. We'll start with the NFL as far as news is concerned. Obviously, we got a game tonight, but we're going to get to that a little bit later in the program. As far as news is concerned, as far as I'm concerned, one of the biggest stories happening right now, the Green Bay Packers have picked up running back Christian Michael wow. from the Seattle Seahawks. The Green Bay Packers have picked up Christian Michael from the Seattle Seahawks. If you got Christian Michael and you were thinking about dropping him in your fantasy league, not so fast. Why, did, why, why would they get rid of him? Well, because for two things, CJ showed up last week and looked pretty impressive, and Thomas Rawls is now supposedly healthy, and they're going to work him back into the offense. So they decided, I guess, to part ways with Christian Michael. Green Bay picks him up off waivers. If if Rawls is sitting in your injury uh, free agency, you might want to pick him up, and you're also going to go with CJ. And I don't really know how to pronounce his last name, but it's spelled P R O. S-I-S-E, I believe. Okay. And those of you that watch the game Sunday night know who I'm talking about. They are saying that he's got moves very similar to Arian Foster. Hopefully, his health is not similar to Arian Foster. No doubt. All right, Dream. So, that's that's interesting. I would have never saw that coming. But Green Bay definitely needs a back. So, I Green understand needs the move. back. So, I think Michaels will fit in very well there. I liked his running style in Seattle. I don't really understand why they part. I mean, I, I I get that they parted ways. I don't understand the timing of it all. And I don't know if, if there was something going on with his relationship with the coaching staff. I did notice a couple of issues in the last few starts with him. But um, I, as far as that's concerned, I think there'll be more that'll probably come out a little bit, you know, later in the week. And, you know, maybe as we get towards Sunday and even maybe into next week, we'll find out probably a little bit more what's going on behind the scenes as far as that's concerned. Um, in other news, guys, just so you know, I just like to point this out in case you've been sleeping. The Pittsburgh Steelers do play the Cleveland Browns this weekend. The <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers play the Cleveland Browns this weekend. And if you don't know why I'm telling you that, then keep playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, it's an interdivision matchup, Dream. Yes, and so what? Yeah, I know. So it's, I know. It's, like, it's, I, it I is Cleve. Win situation. How about the cat got, that got traded from the Patriots to Cleve? Who was yeah, that? No. Oh, I forgot his name, but it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't really think about it right now. But uh, imagine that. What a difference, huh? No doubt. Ah, oh, brutal. And uh, speaking of the NFL, while you're on this subject, Dream, I did notice that the Monday Night Football game, if you teased it any way, total or side, you hit. Oh, definitely. And if you did, uh, we we gave that out. Giants in the under. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Well, you gave it out. I wasn't on the game. I didn't like that game at all. I think the regular, I think the regular hit too, right? Because it was, four, did, what'd you have, 48? Uh, it was uh, 49 and a half. So yeah, you were on the right side on both of that. Regular under hit, so you could have teased it or you could have parlayed it. Unfortunately, I didn't do it for anywhere near the amount that I had on the Patriot on Sunday night, which oh. seems to be the case of how things go down with me this season. But oh. we are getting it together and it's always a work in progress. Pat, we're going to move from the NFL unless you got anything else. like to move it all over to the no, NBA. Go for, go for it, man. Listen, Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry blew it up last night. Okay. 35, K Dizzle with 30. It's at this team, I don't know. they still not doing it for me, dude. It's going to take some time, Dream. It's only, oh, what is, they're only, what, 12 games in, something like that? No, I, I, I get that. But here's my thing, though. Offensively, when you put all of that together, it still should be kind of crazy. I agree. See what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'm saying. Offensively, it still should be like because Kevin Durant can still make three pointers, Stephen Curry can still make three pointers, mm-hmm. Clay Thompson can still like you don't need to play a lot to to be able to shoot the ball like you can shoot it. I understand that. Yeah, I'm watching these guys, and it's just like. Sometimes in the in the shooting and in the shot selection, well, we know Golden State's for years they've been shooting bad shot. I, I've never liked their shot selection. Period. Anyway, sometimes they they go on that that little run where they just shoot some certain type of stuff. But in this case, some of the shots just look so uncomfortable that they're putting it up anyway. Like, like oh, I, you know, I, it's gonna go in, but like, no, I don't know. It just, there's an uncomfortableness to it. So, I mean, we're keeping an eye on it as far as this team's concerned. 
I am just not, and I know it's a work in progress, but if you're telling me you're you're gonna challenge the Cleveland Cavaliers, dude, you got a lot of work in front of you. Really? You, you really? Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll see. I mean, you got to get out of the West, obviously, which shouldn't be a problem for now. Well, no. What? Well, by the way, I, listen. By the way, I don't know that they're getting out. Like right now. Don't tell me they're getting out of the West. Well, but we've had this same conversation yeah. when you've, you know, when you've brought in obviously superstar players into lineups. It just takes some adjustment. It takes it takes a little bit of time to get acclimated in the system, Dream. So, you know I'd not what? Not be surprised that if they didn't get it done this year, like you know, the Heat, the first year LeBron was there. Remember they lost. They lost. You know, right. I know they made it to the finals, but I, listen, I would not be surprised if Golden State. And my thing is. Their plan is to win this year, though. I mean, if they don't win a championship this year, this is a failure as far as you're concerned. Well, they're minus 130 to win the title. So I, you're, I, you're not even at even money for them. I know. Which is, and, and Cleve, I believe, I, I, they were like plus 250 or something like that, Dream. So pretty interesting how that all shakes out. But anyway, guys, what else you got as far as the NBA is concerned, Dream? Um, So Thunder Rockets played last night. Yep. All right, and what I think that they should do in that particular series is just let Russell Westbrook and James Harden just play each other in a one-on-one. Because <laughs> they're having all the teams just suit up for tonight. Why bother? <laughs> so true, man. Why bother? But a uh, good game, pretty good game last night. A lot of scoring, not much defense played once again. Fourth quarter, a little bit of defense came through. OKC kind of held it down against the Thunder. Both teams ironically very much remind me of each other i don't know that either one of these teams i mean the wear and tear that puts on the two superstars and i know i know they're both kind of young you know on the young side but still over the course of the season what especially russell westbrook he exerts so much energy so much energy in his game Shelf life for him, I'm telling you, by the end of this season, I mean, worn out and the shelf life for his career, I would just see him play, not being able to hang around for, you know, as long as some of the other players hang around because to constantly in and out on a on a, on a daily basis, put this much wear and tear on your body, it's definitely going to, you know, it's definitely going to cut down some, on, some of your longevity. So we'll have to keep that in mind moving forward. And other notes also to Clippers, dude. Clippers, I don't know. Time to change something, anything, everything. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what's yeah, yeah, up right. with this Clipper team, dude. But for some reason, the Clippers come in this, this season, and I know last year Blake was hurt and injured, and I know, you know, it's different. Grizzlies beat him last night. This Clipper team, I don't know. Something needs to be – package up some guys and, and move, move some – I don't know, move some – you got to do something. I agree. I mean, it it just seems like the name Rivers just doesn't work out, does it, Dream? Dude, I, as much as I don't want to blame this on Rivers, I think you kind of do have to start your hat. Yeah. I, you know, I, and I, it, I think Doc Rivers is one of the better coaches in the NBA, but I don't know if he's just gotten too comfortable with this group of guys and they don't really listen to him or respond to him well. I I don't know, but the clock, I, I think the clock is maybe. Yeah. It's almost like uh, Marvin Lewis, you know, same kind of situation. You know, you, you, you're you pretty damn good during the season and just, but you just have no chance of making it to the, uh, to the finals. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean. And I, I don't know what's wrong with this team. I feel really bad. There's a lot of talent there. You know, some of these careers, I thought were some of the better players in the NBA during their, you know, during their prime. Chris Paul, you know, I still think he's a great point guard and one of the better point guards in the game. But I, I do think that, you know, he's probably clock's ticking, and, and I don't, I don't see them get, I don't see them winning the championship. Obviously, you got, you know, LeBron, and you also have Golden State in front of you. But this team, to me, just isn't going to be the team that's going to challenge them. I don't think this team's going to go anywhere. Got it. All right. And how are the Bulls doing? How the Bulls been doing? The Bulls, dude. I mean, they won a couple of games. Yeah, <laughs> I, a they don't, games. dude. I seven you know, and four on a year. You like this Bull team? I don't like them as much as you. I happen to like the Knicks more than the Bulls. I think there's a huge upside with this Knicks team. I've been talking about the Knicks, and guys, understand something. 
I generally don't like local teams. They try to shove the local teams down your... I, I don't want anything shoved down my throat, all right? They try to shove local teams down your throat, which is why I don't like the Jets. I don't like the, like the Giants. I don't like the Patriots. I don't like the Knicks. I don't like Brooklyn. I don't like any local teams. I, I, I don't... The Celtics, I kind of care for a little bit, but I, I won't say I love them either. I'm all like West Coast because I don't want to be shoved down things on my throat. But I have to tell you, I'm also an evaluator of talent, and I can spot talent when I see. Well, I think I can anyway. Uh, and been pretty solid with some of that. This Nick team, the upside for this team to me is huge. If they can get everybody to play as a cohesive unit and buy into the system and buy into what they're doing now. Talked to a couple of guys on Twitter, and they said, you know, Jackson needs to be a bigger part of this team, which I don't necessarily disagree with that. I just don't think that Phil Jackson can coach anymore. I don't feel like I don't feel like he wants that. He, that's something he wants to do, and you can't make a person do something that they don't want to do. But he could get involved more with their practices and get involved more with their coaching staff to maybe try to transfer his philosophy down so they accurately understand how to execute it. Got it. I mean, they are uh, five and six right now. One game under five hundred. Right. And you got up like a lot of talent on this team hat. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. I gotta watch a little bit more of the NBA, to be honest with you. I mean, I've been you know entrenched in football. Obviously, I mean Saturday, Sunday, I, I don't even think about watching basketball to be honest with you. And you got college hoop going and everything. But you know, once football comes to a close, that's when I really kind of dig my heels in and get ready. You know what I'm saying? And one more thing, Dream. While we're on the NBA, <laughs> you gotta applaud uh, Luke Walton. Yep. With the Lake Show, Lake Show's doing pretty good, man. Two games over five hundred. Talk about Lake Show. No, a few weeks ago, I've been I've been, yeah. been throwing out because the Lakers are my team, by the way. Because yeah. I, like I just said, I don't do local stuff, so I'll go as far west as possible. But no, I love the Lakers back when Showtime was there, and Lake Show is doing good. Hat. One more thing, back to the Knicks. They seem to decide it to take the gloves off of Persingas and let him do his thing. Yeah. 35 points last night, player. I know. I did see that on social media. He had a big game last night. So he's given, he's getting more touches than he did last year. That's for sure. The Big Zing is doing his thing. I got to call. You know what? I got to get a nickname for him right now. I'm liking the Big Zing. I might change it to something else, but that's my new nickname for him. And, uh, you know, it would the one element that I need to see with this Nick team, I need to see Carmelo Anthony start being... The superstar that Carmelo Anthony is supposed to be. And I, I know you're going to be devastated to hear this, but Dwight Howard didn't play last night in Atlanta and they still won. <laughs> That's your boy, not mine. But anyway, uh, let's take a look at, uh, you got some NHL stuff here, brother. NHL, just a quick reminder, guys. I do think I have something happening for us as far as tomorrow's concerned for all you hockey lovers so definitely come back and check out the biggest show in the world tomorrow I know you're going to check us out regardless but just so you know we're going to touch a little bit on hockey tomorrow also want to make note the Montreal Canadiens lost their second home game on Monday I expect them to bounce back they've had a couple days off um to get themselves back together they play tomorrow night and in case I forget to bring it up tomorrow which I'm sure I probably won't but in case I do just mark that on your calendar because I think they bounce back. You're playing the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, they aren't at home tomorrow, so you might want to wait for them to get back home. But I think tomorrow might be a free opportunity to get involved with them because um, I really like the situation. All right. There you go. There you go. So, Dream, yes. this is the day, Thursday. Usually we do the AP poll on Mondays, and we do the college football playoff rankings on Thursdays. And I'm taking a look at it, and uh, I did notice that Hot, the hot Clemson Tigers are still in there. Hot about it. <laughs> Alabama, number one. The Ohio State University, number two. Michigan, number three. And Clemson, number four. They're calling those the top four teams in the land right now. Hot about it. You're hot. I don't I don't like it at all. You're mad that Action Jackson's not in there. Louisville should be three. I mean, listen, Louisville should be three or two as far as I'm concerned. Um, well, Clemson beat Louisville, Dream. So, but that, I mean, obviously, uh, that one loss, <laughs> you know, Cle uh, Louisville did lose to Clemson. That's the one loss and Clemson lost to Pittsburgh. So that's what I'm saying. I understand that. I get Louisville's it. Louisville's one loss is by the way, their loss is to a better school than Michigan's loss and Ohio state's loss as well. I agree with you. I agree so, with you. So as far as I'm concerned, Louisville should be in that two or three spot. Well, here's here's the here's the team that has the best situation 
known to man right now. And that is The Ohio State University. I'm going to tell you why. Dude. The Ohio State University lost to Penn State. Yep. Penn State has Rutgers and Michigan State to close out their year, which means that you're most likely going to see Penn State in the Big Ten Championship. And when you look at that, they would have to play, like I want to say, Wisconsin if Wisconsin wins out. The Ohio State University, all you got to do is beat Michigan at home. You don't even need to play a conference championship, and you're most likely in the playoffs. How dope is that for them? Mm. Because I, even if even if Penn State wins the Big Ten, ah, th- I mean, there's going to be a conversation of who do you put in? Because Penn State did win that game, but I think they're going to. I don't think they're going to put Penn State over Ohio State. I, I just don't see that happening. You know, this year is bringing up now with this playoffs, it's bringing up another situation, and we we have touched on this in the past with the conference championships. They might need to think about either eliminating the conference championships or making them for every conference. Oh, well, the Big 12 for sure needs it. You know what I'm saying yeah. they, they either got to eliminate it or make it make it mandatory. Um I think that will help with this playoff if they don't want to up the amount of teams that they're going to do playoffs with. Maybe that might be the answer without making more than 14. I still I still agree with you. More than I think they should do both actually. First of all, I think every conference should have a championship, yep. and then I think they should up the, up it to at least six, if not eight. Right. Well, they, from what I understand, this four-team playoff, I believe there's a contract or something like that that has to go for at least five years. Okay. So, I mean, no matter what, Dream, <laughs> you know, nobody's even happy with 64 teams in college hoop, so you're never going to be happy. Uh, I'll be happy. I, honestly, right now, looking at it right now, I would be happy if six teams made made the playoffs in college football. So you would have uh, obviously Louisville in there, and you probably have to splash in somebody from the pack. Sure, Washington. Okay. Well, or Washington State, whoever. Yeah, I, I'd be happy with that because once I get past, if you look at the rankings, once you get past six, like you care, but you don't. Care. I mean, I care, but I don't care. What, what do you think? Um. Well, if there was eight teams, I'd still be pissed off because Western Michigan would be left out. Oh, stop! That's just because. Because you've been winning with Michigan. That's that's the that's the that's the, that's the team that to shock the world, Dream. Uh, you Western know. Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> they are ten and zero. I'm just saying. You know Western Michigan get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Stop me. I don't know. I I I just watched Iowa knock off Michigan, Dream. But I, I, Western I, Michigan I, would beat Iowa. I, Iowa kid. I Iowa lost Iowa to North a, Dakota State. Dreams. How many years have I have I worked with Iowa? Iowa's a great program player. They're a great program, but they're not that great this year. I'm just not saying that great this year, but it's it, it's. A, oh, dude, I can't I can't wait till New Year's Six when Western Michigan's in and walks knocks off a team of the likes of a Oklahoma State or a Utah or a West Virginia or something like that. I'm looking forward to that or an Auburn. No doubt. Well, we'll have the conversation when that happens. Because, yeah. oh, by the way, they won't be Auburn or Oklahoma State, in my opinion. Yeah. But whatever. What's up, Marlon? How you doing, brother? How's everybody doing on Twitter right now? Everybody's commenting, and we're having a great time today. Dream. Great show today. Definitely great show. For, the inner, the, in, You know, a lot of guys have talked to us about the daily thing. And and I understand, and I hear you, and I, I get it, because I've watched a little bit of what's going on daily out there as well, ESPN, and whatever, you know, media avenues you have to go to. And I, I know your, little, your boys got a little bit more energy and excitement than the guys. Yeah, just a touch. Than the suits. But um, we come back so fresh on Thursday, though, and the, the topics are fresh and the energy's there. So, you know, I mean, it's, it, I don't know. Yeah, I got it. it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a, it's kind of a good swap off. No doubt. No doubt. So what else is up your sleeve, brother? All right. So you hit the AP polls. You hit that hat. I guess we go right into tonight because you got some stuff going on. First of all. You want to go into tonight? This was a big game we expected. And then all of a sudden, Craig Ward Jr. and company lost that game. Oh, I know. Exactly. This was like a highlighted game and a dream. I'm going to I'm gonna play a little 80s in the background so we can uh, have a conversation. Just I felt like hearing some 80s. So I got a little funk boutique in the background. So anyway, let's go into it, man. We got tonight's game moving on here. And uh, let me just pull it up. Just give me one second while I pull up the matchups. 
for the NCAA football. We are at Thursday, and we have Louisville going into Houston. This game opened up as a pick 'em and is now up to 14 and a half. So it was probably a pick 'em. It opened up as a pick 'em? Well, when the lines came out, probably <laughs> probably a few months ago. Oh, okay. You know right. what I'm saying? But now, now that Houston is just, uh, you know. They lost to SMU. They lost to Navy. So, I mean, it's going to be pretty tough for them to beat Louisville tonight. Dream, but you do have the Houston Cougars as a home team underdog on prime time. You have the Houston Cougars as a home team underdog on prime time. So, and and you've been a big advocate of the Houston Cougars, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on this and see where you are going tonight. Don't do it, dog, guys. Don't do it. Do not play yourself. And I know you want to. And I almost want to tell you, yeah, you know, 14 points is too much, you know, and and, and Houston's going to make it a game and it's going to be competitive. And I do think it will be competitive. I think so, too. Three qu- for three quarters. Just like Wake was. Just like Wake was. For three quarters, it will probably be competitive. And then Louisville will figure it out. It's my opinion. Listen. <laughs> I know you guys want to take this Houston team. <laughs> 14 and a half is a good number, Dream. I, I get it. I, I get it. I do get it. Now, I will say this. If you put Houston in a teaser and you add another you add another touchdown to this and get this over 21, I think that may work. I honestly think that may work. But you're going to be flirting with danger with it because Louisville, if Louisville is able to step on Houston's throat, they're going to throttle it up, man. They are going to throttle it up because... Once again, Louisville's on the outside looking in. A big win here at Houston, Mike, it's going to help their resume a lot. Oh, definitely. I mean, if they co- if they squeak out a win and struggle, it's going to be tight. It's now, be even tough. though it's been reported that it doesn't matter what the, the margin that they win by, it's not that, that, that relevant to this committee. Right. That's been reported. However, I don't necessarily believe that. You know what I'm saying? If you're one of the people voting... People, you know, you, you say one thing, but in the back of your mind, you say one thing to be politically correct, but in the back of your mind, you really think it's something else. And I got to be honest with you. If Houston go, if Louisville goes out there and beats Houston by 50 points. Yeah, right. You know what? That's in my mind at the end when I'm starting to make my selection. I'm like, hey, listen, you know what? Louisville yeah. beats Houston by 50. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I so I know. keep that in mind. I'm sure Bobby Petrino is probably preaching a little bit to his guy. First of all, he's talking about the guys going out and executing their offense the way they can. We already know about Louisville's offense. If you don't, if you just, you know, got on the planet today, you don't know what's going on there. Lamar Jackson is the Heisman hopeful winner of this season. I think he's running away with it. Definitely one of the great talents in the National College Football Association. I believe that this offense is one of the best offenses. It is the only offense that can actually challenge Alabama for the national title. I don't necessarily know that Louisville could be Alabama, but I do think that out of all the teams left, this team could be the one team that would pose the most issues for Louisville, for, for Alabama, because of Jackson and the dynamic that he brings, passing the ball and also rushing the ball. Now, look across the field, and he's got little cousin across the field, oh, Greg no. Ward Jr., <laughs> who's almost sort of a dumbed-down version of Lamar Jackson because Lamar, because Greg Ward Jr. does kind of the same thing. You know what I mean? He's doing it through the air, doing it on the ground. 144 carries this season, 429 yards on the ground. He can run off and run away and take take off with the ball as well, just with Lamar Jackson. So these teams slightly mirror each other, except Clemson, I mean Louisville, excuse me, Clemson on my mind. Louisville is the much more polished version of the teams, if you ask me. I agree with you. Now, here's a couple of things that intrigue me about this game. Number one, what happened to Houston? Houston started out so damn well and beat a very good Oklahoma team in the beginning, Dream. So, and you, I mean, you see Oklahoma now and they've become, you know, great again. So that's a pretty impressive win. Now, when you lose to teams like SMU and when you lose to teams like Navy, granted, those were on the road. I understand that. But still, I mean, those are those got to make you scratch your head a little bit. Now, you know, you're under the lights. You're in prime time. 
And you have a pretty damn good rush defense. They only allow 92.8 yards on the ground per game. So if they can take out the rushing attack of Louisville and contain Action Jackson and make him beat you through the air, I think Houston can hang with them. I really do. Another thing we got to look at, guys, is the way that Action Jackson holds the ball. And, you know, Houston's got a pretty aggressive defense stream, so they're going to be swatting at that thing left and right. And I think he fumbled, like, either two or three times versus Wake. So you know they're looking at that on the film. And you know they're going to be swatting for days at that ball. So don't be surprised if Louisville turns the ball over a few times. I'm very impressed with Lamar Jackson's throwing ability. I think he's super accurate. He's probably, if not, I, I got to put him as one of the t- most accurate passers in the league, Dream, in, in the nation. So I believe that he's going to have to throw for a lot of yards tonight in order to win this game. I may look at a passing yard prop with him tonight. I think that's going to be the move because I look at the pass D for Houston. They, they do allow 210 yards through the air, and they have not played a lot of prolific passing teams. So I think I'm going to look at that dream, and that might be my play on this one. I think Houston's going to keep it tight for a while. And I, you might be right. Fourth quarter, they just run out of gas, and uh, Louisville runs away with it, though. The thing that bothers me about Houston is, obviously, the loss to SMU, there's, like, no excuse for that as far as I'm concerned. Well, they, they went on the road, Dream. You know how that goes in college. No, but still, there's – and they went on the road. They got but not murdered the, by them. That's, <laughs> they didn't lose. They got murdered by SMU. That's, that's what I was getting ready to allude to. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was trying to get into that I, I think is unexcusable. The loss to Navy, I, I think – is what actually started the whole thing and watching Navy success on the ground and having to answer. And I got to tell you, Navy played out of their mind that game. Right. I've seen Navy play since. They haven't looked nowhere near as sharp as they looked against that game against Houston. Right. But, um, you know, th- this is what happens with teams. Watching them lose to Navy, though, and watching Navy's ability to run the ball on them, I think. I don't think you're going to be able to contain Jackson. I honestly don't have. Okay. And that bothers me because if you can't contain Jackson and you let him able to get out on the corners and do his thing and rush and give your defense fits, it's just going to open up to so much because Louisville, in my opinion, they're probably going to be able to contain Ward to an extent. Okay. I, I can um, see Louisville's that. On defense, they only allow 285 yards, 185 through the air, 102 on the ground. So I believe that Louisville's defense is going to be able to contain Ward to an extent. So that means you're going to be in some three and out situations. You don't want to give this Louisville a bunch of opportunities with that ball against your defense because as Houston's defense wears on during that game, Dude, like I said, fourth quarter could be seriously ugly. So look for that to be an issue. Now, the one great spot for Houston is they are at home tonight. And guys, if you don't think that Houston is going to be psyched and soup to say, if right. we win here, we put ourselves back on the map. We're of back course. a relative topic. We, we're going to upgrade our bowl. You know, this is like going from 18s to 20s as far as rims are concerned. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? As far oh, as, no. You got you to put dubs on the way. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you're not going to go to the playoffs, obviously, if you're Houston, but you are going to get a better bowl um, position. Flip side for Louisville, you lose here, you do not make the playoffs. I agree with you. And you do you, not make the playoffs. It's, it's, this is a tough game. Very tough game, and that's why I feel if you tease this game and you tease Louisville down, you're going to need to throw like 10 points on this piece. Ooh. You got you got. I, I, I would not feel comfortable with just seven. Okay. You know, I, I, I mean, to feel comfortable for me, you guys know me, I'm comfortable with no points. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, I think you're going to have to throw at least a 10-piece on this and get this down underneath a touchdown because this game is might, it could be a lot tighter than it should be. I think Louisville wins, and I expect him to roll, but just to be on the safe side, as we know what happens in the landscape of college football, once again, Hats brought up the home team dog. Right. Uh, prime time, which we do have that going on this evening. Got to pay some attention to that. That's why I say you need to throw probably 10 on this and you'll be safe. I do like Louisville to win this game. Then you got to leave two spots open, obviously. So, all right, Dream. Well, moving on here, unless you got anything else on that game. I got nothing else on the game other than 
I expect Quick to have some success as well um, for for Louisville. I expect him to have a pretty good game. I think Jackson and Quick will be a potent combination that Houston is going to probably have. Houston secondary is probably going to have some issues with that. All right, sounds good. So uh, moving on, there's one more game I want to talk about, and this team has been very good, Dream. Uh oh. We got to talk about Troy. Stop. <laughs> the Troy Trojans. He was going. Hey, hey, listen. The Troy Trojans are eight and one, bro. Okay, they're five and zero oh at home. They're a ranked team right now facing Arkansas State. They're giving eight points. They've won seven consecutive games, and the only loss on their resume is to the Clemson Tigers, where they lost by six points in Death Valley, Dream. You got to pay them some attention. You have to. Absolutely. So, you know what? I'm looking at this, and I'm all over a money line situation tonight with the Troy Trojans to get it done over Arkansas State. Um, you know, I'm looking at it here. I just want to compare the two teams real quick, guys. Troy averages 38.1 points per game, allows 21.6. Uh, they're facing an Arkansas State team that gives up 25 points a game, scores 26. When you look at Troy and when you compare the two, uh, Troy actually lost this game a couple of years ago. Obviously, you got a whole new regime, so that goes out the window. Under over a 55 point stream, I got to take the Troy Trojans tonight. Money line parlay, leave it open and get ready for the weekend. Okay, so here's my thing, right? When you go into a team and you look at their last five games, and you see the initials of the teams that they played and like not one, like you're wondering who, who's that? What's that initial? Uh, I disagree. <laughs> they played Appalachian state and just That's one. A good joke. I'm just joking. Come on, relax. I, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying they lost to Clemson by six points. When you don't know who the mascot is in a team, <laughs> you don't know their nickname. I, I usually just ask my son. He could tell you any mascot in college football. It's crazy. He's you nuts. I'm saying when you play in the red wall, <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, Oh, you ever see the green waves mascot? I'm like, no, <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude? <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, anyway, who the mascot is when you're struggling, you know what I mean? When you beat up on you mask. 52 to 31. Okay, I'm not feeling you all that, I, I, but whatever. Okay, good. So now, get some Troy. With, uh, you know what? It's National Black Cat Day, so stay off Troy. <laughs> Because you are not allowed to take my team. Guys, I'm on the Troy Trojans tonight to get the job done. Oh, my God. Both teams only beat some Alabama <laughs> Jaguars by a touchdown hat. Get some Troy. They struggle with the Jags. All right, Dream. So are you ready for the NFL? Hat, once again, the NFL brings us a stinker on Thursday. It's night. not that bad. Hell? It's not that bad. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, you got Carolina versus New Orleans tonight, guys. So, Panthers. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I mean, Killer Cam really has. I mean, I can't believe. I mean, where is their head at after losing to Kansas City like that dream? They had every chance possible to put that game away, and they just couldn't do it. And you know I, what? Go ahead. I hate to say this. But Mama said, God don't like ugly. <laughs> All right? And Killer Cam. <laughs> they got to win tonight, Dream. What has happened to Killer Cam <laughs> after last season should be a life lesson for a lot of people. And if you got young kids, maybe you want to sit them down and show them the Killer Cam story. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, I agree with you. And you know what I'm saying? I know, I know. Just, I, just be humble. I am shocked. I mean, I never saw this team being this bad this year. I really did. I was completely wrong with the Carolina Panthers this year. Now, you could, I mean, you could account for some of their demise with the absence of Josh Norman, obviously. But, you know, when you, when you look at Carolina here, their pass defense has to be one of the worst in the NFL. Dream, they're giving up. 273 yards through the air per game. Now, in comes, in comes Drew Breezy, who you know is amazing. And, you know, I mean, they average uh, 322 yards through the air per game. Drew Brees does with his uh, receiving court. It's pretty damn good. But, you know what? You got him coming in and playing on grass. And there's a reason why Carolina's favored minus three and a half. They're expecting Carolina to win this game. I don't know if I necessarily disagree with it, Dream. I think Carolina gets it done. I don't. You don't. But here's the deal. Because I'm a sophisticated player, like I like to refer to myself as, I like to do this. I like to take a teaser. I'm going to take Troy, and I'm going to add it with Carolina. And what I'm going to do with Carolina is I'm going to get myself plus three and a half points. 
and I'm going to bring Troy down to one point. And I think that's a pretty good football play. Carolina's defense terrible has shown an inability to have a pass rush along with the secondary not playing up to par. Right, it all adds up. If you cannot pass rush Drew Brees and in your secondary can't execute and cover, son. I know. Flowers, slow songs. Yeah, I get it. I <laughs> right? That's all I'm saying. Flowers, slow songs because Brees is dope and Carolina has not been even that dope at home on top of it. Carolina has not been that great at home. So <sighs> the Saints, Sean Payton, they've already dialed up, you know, an offense to beat Carolina because they beat him already 41 to 38. I know it was in Carolina. I mean, it was I mean, in New Orleans, but they did already beat him this year. And I know we talk about Drew Brees being outside and, you know, his team, the dome team to the outside. I get that. I'm sorry. I've said this in the past. Cam Newton, very talented young man. Okay. However, Cam Newton has taken a pounding this season. All right. He's gotten pounded this season. And I've talked about a hundred times. The guy has no one around him. Okay. When Greg Olson is your top other player, it's just not enough. I mean, I know that works in New England, but other guys step up and catch balls. They don't drop balls because the, 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 the professionalism is just of a different expectation level in that particular team as opposed to this particular team. Nobody steps up for, for Cam. And I, don't get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to give Cam a pass because Cam don't need a pass because he runs his mouth too much. And I actually don't feel bad about what's happening to him because he runs his mouth too much. But... He's got nobody around him, Hat. And Drew Brees, if you if you look at Drew Brees' offense, as far as I'm concerned, Drew Brees, his offense, Sean Payton, and I know they got an awful defense, but they're a better team. Yep. I, I, I mean, I know people are struggling with this because Carolina went to the Super Bowl last year. Yep. But it is, look, at this point in the game where we are now at this season, it is time to recognize Carolina Panthers are not a good football team right now. Yeah. And probably are not going to be this season. They got to do some stuff in the offseason to improve, but they're not a good football team. Well, here's what I got, Dream. I found a Carolina minus three on one of my books. Okay. Here's what I got. Carolina plus four and a half. Right. Troy minus a half. Okay. Perfect play. I love that play. Plus four and a half is dope. So that's what I'm getting tonight, and that's my play. I mean, I stayed off Monday night. I didn't like the game, but I certainly like these games tonight. So, yeah, um, I don't know why you like this game. I, I don't like this game tonight, and I am going to probably not play this game. And if I do, I'm going to play a side. And for some reason, I am now leaning. It's 53, man. Wow. <laughs> it's because, because of the pass defense is awful. For, I know, both, I, for both teams, Dream. You I see, to you might see over, but 53 is a lot of points. Because I could because tonight's game honestly reminds me sort of of I, oof, I don't know. Interdivision it, matchup, baby. Yeah, that's the that, that, 53 is top. I even <laughs> I can't. I'm gonna you know what? I don't have a side. I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a side because honestly, I want to take the Saints, but I just can't. I want to take the Saints, but I can't. I feel like the Saints are going to have a lot of success against Carolina. I, and But you know the reason why I can't take the the, the over is because I still don't understand how Carolina is going to score unless it's off a bunch of Saint turnovers, oh, which I don't see happening. Dude, the Saints, you want to talk about a bad, bad pass defense? 293 oh, yeah. yards, and I'm rounding up, guys. 293 yards per game defensively through the air. But it's gotten a lot better if you look at the last, if well, you look they, at their last four games, I think their defense has gotten a lot better. Well, they had Trevor Simeon. I mean, come on. Last game. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know, Dream. I, I You know what? I, I, I wish you the best of luck whatever side you take, but I'm getting Carolina plus four and a half, and I'm doing it with Troy. That's Not taking I'm a side, because I'm telling you, Carolina going to, and I'm, I'm going to wish you the best of luck, but I'm going to just let you know, Carolina's going to probably lose this game. All right, well, as long as they don't lose by more than four points, I'm happy. That's it. So that's going to do it for us, brother. Great that's Kingdom great. Cakes stomach ache tonight. <laughs> <laughs> great show, Dream. Great show. Love the football talk, man. It gets me excited. It gets me caught up. And uh, we'll be ready to rock with you guys here over the weekend. So, 
What you got to do to close out here, my brother? Hey, I want to thank everybody that's really stupid at the show. I'm sorry. I don't have I don't have a side to give you guys. And listen, I'm not going to force. I, we talked about this before. We're not forcing anything. I may decide something at game time. If I do, maybe I'll tweet it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Yeah, I, this game, I, I just don't feel like there's a need. We've got the weekend coming. A lot of stuff happening this weekend. You got Saturday, big stuff going on. Listen, a couple things about Sunday. I really don't see the Pittsburgh Steelers losing. And I really don't see the Green Bay Packers losing another game. But we'll talk about that on Sunday. I want to thank Immaculate Wayne Yarborough, Buster Carr, Boski's out there, Marlon's out there, uh, Vegas Girl 92661, C. Rodriguez Jr., Crash Action Bets, Rick Lopez, CD and Capra Kings, Jeff Ryan, Stoopy Bets, Jason Riley, Gary Bouchard, just to name a few. Guys, tomorrow. We're going to go to the ice tomorrow. I'm going to have a little special something for you on the ice. I'm not going to give you out any names and make any promises yet. Opportunity to see what I'm talking about. I'm the dream. I always remember who you with. Make the most dream. I don't know why you haven't talked about this one. I mean, you're talking about Pittsburgh and Cleve. I, I would think you'd be going more towards the Patriots at San Francisco. Well, come on, I gotta save something for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we love you to death. Go out there. Go enjoy your Friday Eve and get that money. Let's go.